Okay, so I have this Honeywell fan that I've had for several years now, probably coming up on at least 10 years, and I wanna go ahead and service it. I have actually serviced it every couple of years, but I thought I would share it with you guys. That way, if you need to service one of your own fans, you can do it quite easily. It really does extend the life of the fan. So if you have a fan that when you turn it on, it starts very, very slowly and then gradually ramps up to full speed, it needs to be cleaned and serviced. Now, like I said, this one I've had for years. You can tell the amount of dirt and dust on the blades. What is extremely important is that you clean the blades and you get the dirt and the hair and the dust off of the leading edge of the blades so the fan can operate at its normal efficiency. Dust on the leading edge of the blades causes turbulence, which disrupts the airflow. Now I've already got the screws out of this one. This one had six screws in the back of it. You can see them right here. So I've already got the screws out so I can just lift the front off. Then you can really see the condition that the blades are in. So I wanna go ahead and clean the blades. I'll probably try to get this off of the motor shaft if I can. It has a little spring steel retainer. I might be able to pry it up and get it out of there. I'm not sure. This one's actually still in pretty good shape. It does coast quite well, but I want to go ahead and completely remove that little motor. It's a record player motor. It's how we used to refer to them back in the day, because this is what every little cheap record player used as a motor, just a little AC synchronous motor in here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that screw and that screw right there, and that will let the motor just lift up and out completely. And then I can concentrate on trying to get the blade off so I can clean it. I mean, look at all the gunk, especially on the leading edge. And we need to clean that off and clean off the rest of the fan blade as well. Okay, the motor is up and out. It's detached from the frame. Now let's go ahead and take out these two screws right there and right there, and we'll separate the two halves of the motor. It might be a wise idea to put some witness marks on these because you can put the motor together backwards and it will run in the reverse direction. Okay, I've got the screws out as you can see. Now we should be able to theoretically just pull the back off completely. I'll just go ahead and take the screws completely out. Now this should just lift out of here. There we go, the stator's out, the blades are out. Now, look at how much is in the back. Wow, I couldn't even really see that from the front, but this thing needs servicing bad. Okay, now a lot of times to get the blade off of the motor shaft, if you gently rock it back and forth, it'll move that little spring retainer. There we go. Look at that, it's off. So I want to go ahead and try to remove the spring retainer and it's out. And I want to go ahead and clean the fan blades just in the sink with soapy water, make them all nice and shiny again. And then we're going to get some magical solution acetone out. We'll clean the bushings front and back and we'll re-lube them. We want to make sure we put plenty of lube on these felt pads because the felt pads trap the lubricant and allow it to migrate into the bushing over time. So I just want to wipe off the motor shaft, get any contaminants off of it. And then it'll, it'll come right out just like that. So I'm just going to grab a paintbrush and just clean all the dust off of the motor. Really doesn't need to be done, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyhow just to clean it up. Well, that's just the amount of fuzz that was taken off by just cleaning the grate. Okay, so I've got the fan blades all cleaned up, just some regular dish soap, and I used a paintbrush to get down in there, try to clean all the crud out of there. I got most of it, but definitely looks much, much better. I'm gonna do the same thing to the inside. You can see all the buildup on there. Go ahead and give this a quick wash in the sink. And I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to scrub in and out, make sure everything's nice and clean. All right, all nice and clean. Kind of wiped it off with a little towel. Still might be some water built up in between the slats, but I'm not too terribly worried about that at all. Let's go ahead and get to servicing the motor now. So I've got a paper towel with some acetone soaked into it right here. I just want to make sure I get all the old grease and oil cleaned off of the motor shaft completely. Don't lose the washers. They set up the spacing of the motor. Now I'll go ahead and wipe off the washers just so there's no contaminants on them as well. Get those back on there just like that. Next, I'm just gonna grab a cotton swab soaked with acetone and I'll clean out the bushing to get any old lubricant off of it completely. Same thing with the backside. 
Dry it off with the clean end, the dry end. There we go. Now we got clean, dry bushings ready to go back together. Let's lube them up now. Like I said, you wanna make sure that you soak the felt, which is down inside here, with oil so that it can migrate to the bushings over time. All right, so next I'm just gonna add an ample amount of oil. And I wanna let that felt soak a lot of the oil in. Once again, I'm just using the Zoom Spout Oiler. So we'll let that soak in for a few minutes. It's a very fine machine oil. I just picked this up at my local appliance repair shop here in town. I've had it for years and I did fill my little needle point oiler with it. When you see me use that, that is what's in it. Zoom Spout Oil. So I will use this later when I oil the motor because it does give a very accurate pinpoint oil application. But like I said, I'm just gonna let this sit in here and hopefully soak into the felt over time. We'll sop up the rest, including that drop that dropped out right there. Then we'll put this thing back together. I just wanna let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes to let the felt absorb any extra oil. Okay, so next I'm just gonna go ahead and just take a paper towel and just blot up the extra oil that the felt did not absorb over time. Just like that. Now, especially on this one, the, uh, the end that does not go through, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply some oil on the bushing itself. I'll do the same thing when I put it back together. I'll oil the motor shaft. And I'll put just a thin film on this bushing also. So when you're doing these, it is extremely important that you get all the old contaminated oil off of the bushing and the shaft. I've had contaminated oil recontaminate the new oil and somehow it changes the chemical composition of the oil and over time it does kind of degrade that new oil. So it's important that you get all the old oil off of the shaft before you go any further. Okay, well, I think it's time to reassemble the unit now. So I'm just gonna add some fresh oil to the motor shaft itself. I realize there's gonna be a lot of excess, but that's okay. Just wanna make sure it turns freely, and it does turn nice and free with no binding whatsoever. I just wanna go ahead and make sure when I put the bottom cap on that there's no binding against the, the rotor itself, and it's perfect. Make sure you can see light through both of those. Next, I'll just reassemble the two halves back together as one. We'll go ahead and tighten them up. Make sure the motor spins freely at this point. Go ahead and remount the motor back in place now. And I wanna to try to catch the old threads if possible, so I'm not cutting new threads into the plastic. And that's done by slowly reversing the screw, and then normally you can feel it drop right there. And so that way I'm into the old threads Tighten those up, make sure we still have free movement. And we do, everything spins absolutely perfectly freely at this point. Now it might be necessary to crimp some of these down a little more to get a little more grip on the shaft. It doesn't take much, just the slightest amount. And we'll just push it down into place just like that. Okay, blades are back on it. Look at how much easier that coasts than before. Remember it used to stop 
much faster, had a lot more resistance because of the grease going bad, the oil turning into grease, making it much thicker than it actually should have been. Okay, I'll go ahead and put the front back on it and I'm going to get the kilowatt out. We'll plug it in and see what kind of power this thing draws. So I've got my kilowatt out. We'll just plug the fan into it. Let's go ahead and switch it over to watts. So that's low, 33 watts. Medium, 36 watts. And high, 41 watts. So anyhow, there it is, servicing your fan. So I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on repairing your fan, servicing the bushings, the bearings, whatever it is, cleaning the blades, cleaning the inside, and just getting some more life out of a simple tabletop fan. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.